In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in, 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 in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my tears. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. Lord, our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priests, grant a persevering obedience to your will to this deacon of your church, whom you graciously choose today for the office of the priesthood, so that by his ministry and life he may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion, a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listful, listless spirit. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, be serious and sober-minded so that you will be able to pray. Above all, let your love for one another be intense because love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. As each one has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good as stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever preaches, let it be with the words of God. Whoever serves, let it be with the strength that God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Please remain standing for the bishop's blessing.
Let him who is to be ordained a priest come forward. Matthew Chartier. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain this man, our brother, to the responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know him to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those concerned, I testify that he has been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we choose this, our brother, for the order of the priesthood. Thanks, Thanks be to God. My dear son, Deacon Matthew, as I've gotten to know you during the course of your formation, it seems that the two of us have a few things in common. For both of us, the number 13 is a very important number. It's a very important number, maybe even a, a number of good fortune for us. I happen to be the 13th Bishop of the Diocese of Marquette, and you will be the 13th priest that I ordain since I've been the Bishop of Marquette. <laughs> and in addition, both of us are a little bit on the quiet side. Now, this doesn't apply to you, but it applies to me. I've just kind of justified my personality by telling myself, it's far better for me to remain silent than to open my, and appear stupid, than to open my mouth and remove all doubt, you know. <laughs> but that being said, it seems fitting that we reflect on the importance of silence in the life of the priest. And I speak here not merely of the absence of talking or the absence of sound, but something, something far deeper a deeper interior silence. And it seems that in our current culture, this is something that is much, much needed by, by many, many people. And so it is important that the priest be formed in interior silence, that he lives interior silence, and he is able to form his people in this disposition. You see, we live in a time when it, it is so easy to be preoccupied with uh, devices of, of, of various sorts, from cell phones to tablets to computers and the lure of the internet and social media. And these things can very easily create an interior disquiet that many people aren't even aware of and wonder why there are so many problems with anxiety and depression and so forth because we become more isolated and the devices themselves have a way of producing an interior disquietude. In addition, we live in a consumerist society which tends to fuel desires for more and more and more. And as long as desires are restless 
for something more or something better, there's a lot of noise inside. And our culture also promotes all kinds of desires that would take us away from God. And all this does is produce greater alienation, anger and bitterness and isolation and anxiety and interior disquietude. And so many of, of, of our people are, are, are unaware of, of this great noise that's inside of them because they, they, they keep looking for all kinds of things to, to occupy their attention. And as a result, the voice of God is almost deadened within them because they don't have the interior silence to hear him and to listen to him. And so the, the priest, first of all, must, must cultivate that, that type of discernment of spirits that uh, St. Ignatius of Loyola so, so eloquently writes about and, and, and forms people in. And we know for St. Ignatius, he noticed a, a great difference for, you know, prior to his conversion, after he was injured and he was convalescing, when he read Lives of the Saints and he dreamed about doing the things that the saints did, that, that created a certain sense of interior joy and peace for him. And when he wrote, read these, or when he read these books of chivalry and so forth, it, it left him empty. And there was a disquiet inside of him. And so, so the priest must be able to know the movements of his own heart and know which kinds of desires and which kinds of movements are moving him to the Lord into greater peace and which are creating more and more interior noise. And so as a priest is called to offer sacrifice, the first sacrifice to offer is the mortification of the desires that produce interior disquietude and anxiety and dull the conscience and drown out the voice of God. This is the first of the sacrifices the priest offers so he can help his people offer the same sacrifice. Because how important it is for everyone to attain this type of silence, to know interior peace, an abundance of joy, and the presence of God who dwells within. Moreover, we are in the midst of a Eucharistic revival in the United States. And the vision for this revival is a renewal of the whole church through a personal encounter with Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. And this interior silence is essential for that encounter to take place. And silence, the formation of silence, is essential to participate in the Holy Mass in a very deep way. The general instruction for the Roman Missal, which is the directions of how to celebrate Mass, mentions the word silence 20 times. And so one would think that there's, this is something important. And it's not just the fact that there's a, a time where there's exterior silence, but that is meant to foster and lead to the interior silence where the Lord can be encountered. 
And so let me just highlight a couple points in the general instruction that mention silence. So this can be foremost in your mind when you celebrate Mass and foremost in your mind as you form people to participate in the Mass, the Eucharist, the source and summit of our entire life. In the time before the liturgy is begun, the Roman, the general instruction has this to say. Even before the celebration itself, it is a praiseworthy practice for silence to be observed in the church, in the sacristy, in the vesting room, and in adjacent areas so that all may dispose themselves to carry out the sacred celebration in a devout and fitting manner. And it seems that these days, many times, our churches have been turned into social halls where we tend to lose the sense of the sacred and the, the, the transcendence. And now, mind you, it's really important for us as brothers and sisters in Christ to have good friendships with each other and to visit and, and, and so forth. But the place to do that is in the parish hall or in the gathering space. And so when we come into this church or other churches, we can begin to dispose our hearts to this interior quiet so that we may truly encounter the Lord, lest it be drawn, uh, 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 drowned out by various forms, not only of exterior noise, but above all, interior noise. And then the Roman Missal says this uh, about the collet or the opening prayer. Next, the priest calls upon the people to pray and everybody together with the priest observes a brief silence so that they may become aware of being in God's presence and may call to mind their intentions. My brothers and sisters, this silence is not just waiting for the server to bring the book. It's a brief pause meant to help all of us just tune into the fact that we're in the presence of God. And just imagine how much deeper our participation in the liturgy can be when all these moments of silence occur. We just, we just call to mind that we're in God's presence. In speaking about the liturgy of the word, the first major part of the mass, the general instruction says this. The liturgy of the word is to be celebrated in such a way as to favor meditation. And so any kind of haste such as hinders recollection is clearly to be avoided. In the course of it, brief periods of silence are also appropriate accommodated to the assembled congregation. By means of these, under the action of the Holy Spirit, the word of God may be grasped by the heart and a response through prayer may be prepared.
So again, notice the importance of silence, not just the exterior silence, but the interior silence. That the word of God can be grasped. If there's all kinds of noise going in our heart, going on in our heart, how are we going to hear how, how God is really speaking to us when the readings are proclaimed? This is the powerful word of God. When God speaks, his word has the power to affect what it signifies. And if there's all kinds of noise inside, how can we hear God speaking to us? And then with respect to the Eucharistic prayer, where the bread and wine are changed into the body and blood of Christ, the general instruction says this, the Eucharistic prayer requires, requires, mind you, that everybody listens to it with reverence and in silence. Every time we participate in Holy Mass, we witness a great miracle whereby the power of the Holy Spirit, mere bread and wine are changed into the body and blood of Christ. And if we don't have this interior disposition of silence, our eyes are closed to the miracle that takes place before us. And the church says the prayer requires silence. So our eyes, our hearts may be opened to the great gift that the Lord gives us upon this very altar. My dear son, we live in a world that is starving for silence and probably isn't even aware that it is starving for silence because there is so much noise inside. The formation in interior silence is paramount for the priest so that he may participate deeply in the celebration of Holy Mass and form his people to do the same. In so doing, the Mass really is the source and summit of our life where we encounter the Lord Jesus in a way so profound it goes beyond words. and brings about the renewal of the whole church. And so, my son, I invite you and I invite all of you to spend a moment to cultivate silence that the Lord may speak to our hearts and open for us the mystery that will just be displayed before our eyes.
Dear son, before you proceed to the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your resolve to undertake this office. Do you resolve to discharge unfailingly with the guidance of the Holy Spirit the office of the priesthood in the presbyteral rank as a trustworthy co-worker with the order of bishops in feeding the Lord's flock? Do you resolve to carry out the ministry of the word worthily and wisely in the preaching of the gospel and the teaching of the Catholic faith? I do. Do you resolve to celebrate the mysteries of Christ reverently and faithfully according to the tradition of the church, especially in the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the praise of God and the sanctification of the Christian people. I do. do you resolve to implore with us the mercy of God for the people entrusted to you with zeal for the commandment to pray without ceasing? Do you resolve to be united more closely each day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourself to God for the salvation of all? I do with the help of God. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Please stand. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Almighty Father, that he pour forth heavenly gifts in abundance on this his servant, whom he has chosen for the office of the priesthood. Please kneel.
we pray, O Lord our God, and pour out upon this your servant the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that you may surround with your rich and unfailing gifts the one whom we present to your fatherly care for consecration through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Can you do me a favor?
Please stand. Draw near, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity and bestower of all graces, through whom all things progress, through whom everything is made firm who by the power of the Holy Spirit, in order to form a priestly people, establish among them ministers of Christ your Son in various orders. Already in the earlier covenant, there arose offices instituted by mystical rites, so that when you had set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in order and dignity to join them and assist them in their work. Thus in the desert you instilled the spirit of Moses in the minds of seventy wise men. With them as helpers, he more easily governed your people. So too over the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's fullness that the number of priests proscribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, the Apostle and High Priest of our Confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself unblemished to you and made his apostles who were consecrated in the truth sharers in his mission. To them you added companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through all the world. Now we pray, O Lord, provide also for our weakness this helper whom we need for the exercise of the apostolic priesthood. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to this your servant the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within him the spirit of holiness. May he hold the office second in order received from you, O God, and by the example of his manner of life, may he inspire right conduct. May he be a trustworthy co-worker with our order, so that by his preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may he be a faithful steward of your mysteries so that your people may be renewed through the cleansing waters of rebirth and refreshed from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. 
May he be joined to us, Lord, in imploring mercy for your people and trusted to him and for the whole world. Thus may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ become your one people, brought to perfection in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard you and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God.
receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do. Imitate what you will celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who have willed that your priest should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, Grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants may constantly please you, and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is my It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous designs were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses man to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we to give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for this your servant, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of the priesthood. And in your mercy, keep your gifts in him, so that what he has received by divine commission, he may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Father Matthew, if you'd come forward. I hereby grant you all the faculties proper to the priests of the Diocese of Marquette, so you're ready to get to work. And I'm also happy to please to present you with your first assignment. I assign you as parochial vicar of St. Peter Cathedral and St. Mary Mission. Congratulations. And may I have your blessing, Father. With your spirit. Amen. And before we conclude, I wish to just extend some words of gratitude to all who were involved in uh, Father Matthew's formation, uh, to his family in particular. Uh, for offering your son to the church and for all the good you have done in forming him to be a good and holy man. And also to everyone who's gathered uh, in this great celebration. Thank you very much. There is a reception uh, after, the, after the mass in the parish hall. You're all invited. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace, that you may dutifully discharge the duties of the priesthood. Amen. May he make you a servant and a witness in the world to divine charity and truth, and a faithful minister of reconciliation. Amen. And may he make you a true shepherd to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful, that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. <laughs>